Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to a word for today. Today we have a word that I can't believe we haven't come at and looked at sooner. It is day 81, but we could have looked at this word in Genesis chapter 2, in Exodus chapter 20, but we're going to talk about that word, that special word today. To find out what word I'm talking about, join me now. Thanks for taking the time to be with me in God's word this morning. I am here with Ryan. I want to say good morning to you, Ryan, and happy preparation day. Before you say anything, Ryan, I'm going to ask you all the questions up front so I can give you the time to share from God's word. I'm going to ask you, what is your word for today? Why you chose that word? What verse number can we find it in Exodus chapter 31? Can you read that verse for us and then share any lessons, any insights that you have based upon that word? I hope you got it all. That was a lot and that was a mouthful, but uh, we are ready from you, Ryan. So take it away, Ryan. Awesome. Good morning. It's good to be back. Um, I feel like a bit more comfortable than last time. I'm in my own place. <laughs> So my word for the day is Sabbath. And uh, as you said, you know, I was also quite surprised that we haven't used it before. Um, mention of it is already made in the first chapter, saying that God rested. And this is exactly what the Sabbath is, the day of rest. And uh, that's partly the reason why I chose it. But specifically for today, we can find it in Exodus 31, verse uh let's say 13 all the way through to 18 and i'm going to read that and i want to specifically focus on verse 13 it says you and god is speaking to moses here he says you are to speak to the people of israel and say above all you shall keep my sabbaths for this the sabbath is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that you may know that i the lord sanctify you Continues and says, uh, you shall keep the Sabbath because it is holy for you. Everyone who profanes it shall be put to death. Whoever does any work on it, that soul shall be cut off from among the, his people. Six days sh work shall be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of solemn rest, holy to the Lord. Whoever does any work on the Sabbath day shall be put to death. Therefore the people of Israel shall keep the Sabbath, observing the Sabbath throughout their generations as a covenant forever. It is a sign forever between me and the people of Israel that in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. So the concept of the Sabbath, okay, whatever your understanding of it, uh, is clear that it's something that's very important. God says if you break this law or this commandment of the Sabbath, that man should be put to death. That's how serious God is about this. So what is the Sabbath? And, you know, this is, we don't have the time to do that on here. But you you will have most probably if you're not, you know, it's, even if you're not Seventh-day Adventist or Jewish or whatnot, the concept of the Sabbath is something that you should have heard of before. Um, it's this idea of not not just going to church for two or three hours on a, on a certain day, but it's actually setting aside a whole day. Um, from, you know, sunset to sunset. And uh, it's using that day to relax. Well, I want to say relax in God, but rest in God is a better term. And um, from personal experience, you know, growing up in the church, uh, in the Adventist church, I didn't always understand this. I always thought, oh, you know, I know it's special, but I just saw it as, okay, from Friday evening to sunset Saturday evening, we can't do anything fun. But as I grow older um, and, uh, you know, I'm becoming my own person in a sense, I'm realizing why God gave us the Sabbath and, and I'm realizing the worth of it, um, especially for the 21st century. Like, our, our lives are very busy. You know, you there's always things to do. There's always, you know, a lot of people are part of, you know, what's known as hustle culture. You know, there's always something that you're doing. You know, there's, there's rare moments where you sit still. And even if you are someone that, you know, especially now with the lockdowns and whatnot, and you've, you know, you're busy watching Instagram Reels all the time or, or YouTube, it gets mundane or it gets tiring. And 
God from the very beginning knew that we would always need a day where firstly we can just escape from all of it and also just reconnect with God because yes we do our daily devotions but on the Sabbath it's a whole day where we really have no excuse but to connect with God and to connect with others um, in God and that's that's the the basics of it for me it's um, it's this it's not a day where you, know, you don't do anything it's you know you can't work you can't do this you can't do that it's rather a day where God says to us Look, I don't want you to do this because I want you to actually just give a seventh of your week to me, um, which is actually very little of God to ask. You know, you can ask for a lot more, but all he's asking is a seventh of your week. And, um, yeah, it's something that, I, um, that I'm thankful for. Um, and so many times, especially in the past two years of, being a university student or college student, uh, I get to a Friday afternoon and I say, I'm glad it's on the Sabbath. Um, because you just you just want to, you know, throw your phone away. You want to forget about studies that you have to do. And, uh, you know, you realize oh, maybe I missed my devotion on Wednesday and you use that day to, to sort of catch up. But also, you know, get to see other people, other believers, and uh, also gain, you know, when going to church, gain a different perspective of God through the Sabbath. Because it's meant to not just be you, you know, sleeping in bed all day. It's actually meant to be a day where you actually commune with others. And um, that's what God says, you know, in verse 13. He says to Moses, he should let this know to all people of Israel, above all. So above any of the commandments that he gave to Moses. You shall keep my Sabbaths. Not the Sabbath as if it's a far off separate concept. It's God's Sabbath. And why? Because it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations. The Sabbath was meant to be this sign of putting God's people apart from, you know, from others, from showing, oh, these people actually do something different. I know a lot of times growing up, um, Friends of good friends of mine actually changed their parties from being on a Saturday to being on a Friday, just so I could join. And it's something that they started to notice. It's something that they said, Oh yeah, we know you can't, you know, go to the mall or we know you can't do this because it's your Sabbath. And they've respected that. And um in just in that small example, I've really seen how just by them knowing that I keep the Sabbath, it's reminded them of what I believe and, and what has what God has set forth. Um, and um, yeah, so even in that, that, that in and of itself is not only a reminder to us of, of God and our promise to God and our connection to God, but it's also a reminder for those who are not necessarily within the same belief as you are. Mm. Beautiful. Thanks so much, uh, Ryan. And, and I really appreciate um, you even sharing that uh, that experience and uh, helping us to understand verse 13 is a beautiful uh, verse. In fact, you could have taken words, many words for today from that verse, um, how God says, my Sabbath. Um, and so it's funny how your friends mentioned that it's your Sabbath. But when we identify with God, when we keep his day, um, it's a sign of that connection, um, of that relationship with our God. And notice that the verse, verse 13 ends by saying, I am the Lord which sanctifies you, which makes you holy. It's not in our own efforts that we become holy, but God is the one who sanctifies us. And uh, another and even, word... Sorry, could... sorry. even in, no, go ahead, in the following in, in verse 14, it says, you shall keep the Sabbath because it is holy for you. It doesn't say you shall keep the Sabbath because I say so. It says you shall keep mm. the Sabbath because it is something special for you. No, it's true. It's true. And um, it was a sign. We've, we've, we've learned that from your example, um, from your experience. Interestingly, that this word sign, we've come across it already in Exodus when uh, there are 
10 signs or 10 plagues. And when Pharaoh was speaking to Moses, when Moses says, God says, let my people go. And Pharaoh asked, well, who is this God? Who is the Lord? And, uh, and there are 10 signs, 10 plagues, which reveals who God is. And so the Sabbath reveals who God is in our life and that he is the creator. And we recognize, we acknowledge his lordship. And so we appreciate that. And, and I think it's so fitting that today, on Friday, on preparation day, preparing for the Sabbath, that we have that as our word for today. So thank you so much, because uh, after our work this morning, we are going to be preparing for the Lord's day for his Sabbath, remembering that it is a sign between us and him and that he's the one who sanctifies us. And so we pray that you've been blessed by this word. Thank you so much, Ryan. Um, I remember when we were in Genesis chapter 22 and your word for that day was provide, that God provides and God has provided us the Sabbath. He's provided us with rest. And we pray that you watching at home would be blessed and will be able to experience the rest that God uh, that God is giving to you and to your family. With that in mind, can I invite you, Ryan, to please lead us in prayer? Sure. Let's just close our eyes. Thank you, Lord, for, first of all, uh, giving us the strength to go through our different weeks and get to the different things that we have to do. But I want to especially thank you for giving us a Sabbath as a chance to rejuvenate and reconnect to you and recharge for the week um and also just to get together with other believers and uh gain different perspectives about you and maybe realize that um there's new things that we have to learn about you or there's things that we have forgotten about you thank you for giving us the sabbath uh, as an opportunity to do so but it's not something that we do because we have to but it's something that we keep because we want to Thank you, Lord, for that, and be with us as we go into the Sabbath. I also saw your wonderful and beautiful name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. And thank you all for watching and for listening. Let us know if there was another word. Maybe it was something that I mentioned, one of those words, or any other word within Exodus chapter 31. We'd be excited to read and to learn from you. The Bible says, iron sharpens iron. So, uh, We'll see you in the comments section below. Join us again tomorrow for our word for today. It will be Sabbath and we are looking forward to seeing you and finding out what that word is in Exodus chapter 32. But for now, we pray that you have a blessed day. Thanks again, Ryan. We'll see you again soon, maybe in Leviticus. But for now, it's goodbye from Ryan and it's goodbye from me. God bless you. Thanks for watching. For all your queries and comments, questions and answers, observations, applications, reservations and consternations, you can leave them all in the comment section below. And don't forget, sharing is caring. So don't keep the Pastor B channel to yourself. Don't be selfish. Go and tell somebody. Admit it. You liked that, didn't you? Hit the thumbs up button. And don't forget to subscribe to the Pastor B YouTube channel. I don't want you to miss any content, so make sure that you read.